I have no disclosures. Today, I'm going to briefly provide some history and background about the PTI device, and then I am going to focus on the intraoperative setup and utilization of the PTI while highlighting the tips and tricks we have learned along the way. The PTI system aids in the identification of parathyroid tissue by confirming parathyroid tissue already visually localized by the surgeon. The PTI gives real-time quantitative information and is dive-free. The PTI system operates on the principle that the autofluorescence of parathyroid tissue is significantly higher than thyroid and other neck tissues. Here is how to interpret the PTI display. When you turn on the console, you will need to set the baseline by taking five thyroid measurements. When the probe touches tissue, it gives a detection level and a detection ratio. The threshold for parathyroid detection is set as 1.2 times the baseline, and the PTI will beep. The example here shows a baseline of 42, and a detection level is 153, making the ratio 3.6 and consistent with parathyroid tissue. This video will demonstrate the connection of the probe and turning on the console. After turning on the console, you will have to obtain five levels on the thyroid to get your baseline. Once you set the baseline, you must scan the entire thyroid with the probe, looking for any very high areas that you may have missed of fluorescence, and you might have to reset the baseline. Here we will have a suspect parathyroid, and the PTI, as you can see, confirms that this is parathyroid tissue with a high ratio of 9.2. Regarding patient selection, each surgeon can analyze their own practice as to when PTI is most useful. Possible cases to consider include total thyroidectomy with difficult procedures where the anatomy is distorted or the tissues are scarred or sticky like Graves and Hashimoto's thyroiditis, but when you have bulky adenopathy, whether in benign or malignant disease, or in some reoperative thyroidectomies. This is a 65-year-old patient who presented with a large substernal thyroid with compressive symptoms. Had a 20, 20 years ago, had a right thyroid lobectomy. I had no records to review. Additionally, she had a prior anterior cervical uh, neck fusion with, through the left neck. This case illustrates a reoperative scarred field with an unknown status of the right-sided parathyroid glands in distorted anatomy. With the PTI, we could confirm a left superior parathyroid gland that was embedded in scar tissue, allowing minimal dissection and progression of the case. The left inferior parathyroid gland was splayed on the surface of the thyroid, and I was unsure that it was parathyroid tissue, and the PTI confirmed this, allowing me to progress and to not damage the parathyroid. We could also confirm that parathyroid tissue was left in situ without the need for frozen section. So how is the PTI beneficial? It allows for confidence in identification and efficiency with distorted anatomy or inflammation or scar present. It allows for confidence in identification and efficiency when lymph node burden is high, confidence in identification and preservation during dissection and examination of excised specimens. And it also allows for frequent interrogation of tissue and feedback for the learner. Next, I will talk about troubleshooting lessons learned. Here are observations on detection levels. As you recall, five detection levels determine the baseline. If your sampling of the background fluorescence is too high or too low, you will miss parathyroid tissue, false negative, or false positives. Conditions that may affect background fluorescence are listed, such as Hashimoto's, thyroid nodules, or a subcapsular parathyroid. A note of caution about detection ratios. Most normal parathyroid glands have high detection ratios. A detection ratio between 1.2 and 1.9 should be interpreted with caution. You need to stop and expose the tissue and sample the entire gland and recheck. Parathyroid adenomas may have heterogeneous fluorescence with areas of no fluorescence and then a cap area of normal tissue that's highly fluorescent. What about when everything is beeping? This can happen if the probe has been sitting idle and fluorescent tissue is dried on the probe tip. 
To fix it, you could dip the probe in saline or water. As with any tool, we need surgical judgment. There are tissues in the neck that can be, but don't always give false signals. Positive, false positive signals can sometimes be seen with colloid nodules, brown fat, lymph nodes. So be careful with surgical drapes, sponges, kidners, as sutures, uh, as they can be highly fluorescent. False negatives can be seen when the parathyroid is not exposed or as heterogeneous or in some parathyroid carcinomas. I want to highlight the advantages of the PTI probe. The PTI gives real-time auditory, visual, and quantitative feedback when the parathyroid gland is identified. With the PTI, there is no disruption of operating room flow and the lights remain on. The compact, easy to hold probe allows easy access to parathyroid glands with small incisions, even when they're located in deeper planes and aberrant locations. In conclusion, the PTI can be used to accurately confirm suspected parathyroid tissue to improve surgeon confidence. The PTI has excellent negative predictive value and could increase efficiency. The PTI could help shorten the learning curve of training surgeons by allowing frequent interrogations of tissue. As with any tool, surgeon judgments remains important. Thank you very much for your attention.